Hey, this is Joe, and today let's talk about the 689599.7 rule, which is sometimes called the empirical rule. And this rule applies to normal distributions, where you're given some mean and some standard deviation. The distribution itself is kind of a bell shape, and right at the center is our mean. Normal distributions are symmetrical around their mean, so 50% of our data is going to exist on the right side of the mean, and 50% of our data is going to exist on the left side of the mean. Now, what does this rule tell us? The 68 tells us what percent of our distribution lives within one standard deviation of the mean. So, what percent exists between the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus one standard deviation? If we were to go out another standard deviation, so add and subtract two standard deviations, we're going to have 95% of our distribution. And finally, if I go out three standard deviations from the mean, add and subtract three standard deviations here, I would have 99.7% of my distribution within those numbers. So where do these numbers come from? Well, let's first talk about the function that defines the normal distribution. So for any normal distribution, the mean is represented by mu, and the standard deviation here is represented by sigma. And the function for the normal curve is this function here. And notice that my only variable here is x. Mu, sigma, e, and pi are all numbers, where mu and sigma will be given to us. They're our mean and our standard deviation, and x is the only thing that's a variable within this function. So, for any mu and sigma, I can plug them into this function to get the normal curve for that given normal distribution. So let's just say that my mean is 0 and my standard deviation is 1. So if I plug mu and sigma into our function here, I would end up getting something like this. Then, if I wanted to graph this function, I would get a graph that looks something like this. Since our mean is 0 here, our normal curve kind of splits the y-axis. And then the standard deviation kind of defines the spread of our normal distribution. Now, the normal distribution represents a continuous probability density function. And when you're working with continuous probability density functions, the probability at an individual point is always going to be zero. But then the probability of intervals is going to be equal to the area underneath the curve within that interval. The probability of, say, x being zero is going to be zero because I can't take the probability of a point. But say the probability from zero to one is going to be represented by the area under this curve from zero to one, which is equal to this. So how do I find the area underneath a curve? If you've taken calculus before, I believe you've learned about integrals. We can use integrals to calculate the area underneath this curve. So thinking back to the 68.95.99.7 rule, I could use integrals to calculate the percent of our distribution that exists between two numbers. So if I wanted to find the percent of our distribution that lives within one standard deviation of the mean, since our mean is 0 and our standard deviation is 1, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and 0 plus 1 is positive 1, so I would take the integral from negative 1 to 1 of our probability density function with respect to x. And it turns out that that integral is equal to 0 0.6827, which as a percent is 68.27%. If I wanted to find the area underneath the curve between two standard deviations of the mean, I would go from 0 minus 2, which would be negative 2, to 0 plus 2, which is going to be positive 2. So I'm going to take the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the probability density function dx, and that's going to equal 0 0.9545. Finally, to find the percent of the distribution within three standard deviations of the mean, I take the integral of our probability density function from negative 3 to 3 dx, and that's going to equal 0 0.9973. So within one standard deviation of the mean, we have 68.27% of our distribution. Within two standard deviations of the mean, we have 95.45% of our distribution. And between three standard deviations of the mean, we have 99.73% of our distribution. So let's go ahead and make a table where we're going to vary our mean and our standard deviation. So we're going to have our mean and our standard deviation in the first column. We'll calculate the area within the first standard deviation of the mean in the second column. 
we'll put the area within two standard deviations of the mean in the third column, and we'll put the area within three standard deviations of the mean in the fourth column. And when mu equals zero and the standard deviation is one, we already know what these three values are gonna be. It's gonna be 0 0.6827, 0 0.9545, and 0 0.9973. So what happens if I was to keep the mean the same, but change the standard deviation? Let's say I change the standard deviation to one half. The function would then look like this, and its graph would end up looking like this. And when I compare these two normal distributions that have the same mean, it looks like this new one's a little bit tighter. So when the standard deviation decreases, our data gets a little bit more compact, closer to the mean. Similarly, if we were to increase our standard deviation, our data would be more spread out. And so our, you can imagine stretching this bell curve out more. Anyway, let's just focus on this new normal distribution that we just picked. Here, my first standard deviation is going to go from 0 minus 1 half, which is negative 1 half, to 0 plus 1 half, which is going to be positive 1 half. So if I integrate from negative 1 half to positive 1 half of my probability density function dx, I'm going to get 0.6827. If I go out two standard deviations from the mean, I'll go 0 minus 2 times 1 half, which will be 0 minus 1. And I'll have 0 plus 2 times 1 half, which will be 0 plus 1, which will be positive 1. So the integral from negative 1 to 1 of our probability density function dx is going to be 0.9545. If I then go out one more standard deviation, I'm going to take the integral from negative 1.5 to positive 1.5, and I'm going to get 0.9973. Notice these all agree within each one of the standard deviations of the mean. So let's actually change our mean, right? We've let our mean be zero for both of these. Maybe that's what's keeping these to be the same. Let's let our mean be 50 and our standard deviation be 10. That means that our normal distribution is gonna be centered at 50, and then the standard deviation at 10 is gonna spread it out more than any of the other ones that we've seen. So our graph's gonna look something like this. And its function, of course, is over here. To get the area within one standard deviation of the mean, I'd take 50 minus 10, which would be 40, and 50 plus 10 is going to give us 60. So the integral from 40 to 60 of our probability density function is going to be 0 0.6827. Then my integral from 30 to 70 of our probability density function, which is going to represent two standard deviations of the mean, is going to be 0.9545. If I go from 20 to 80, I'm going to get the area within the third standard deviation, and that's going to be 0 0.9973. I have a feeling you've probably caught the pattern by now. Let's go ahead and just say our mean is 1,000 and our standard deviation is 25. If you had to guess what the area is going to be between each one of these, what would that be? If you guess that it's going to be the exact same as all three other examples, you're going to be correct. Notice that in all four of my examples here, my area underneath the curve within each standard deviation column is exactly the same. The area within one standard deviation of the mean is 68.27% of our distribution. The area within two standard deviations of the mean is 95.45% of our distribution. And then the area within three standard deviations of the mean is 99.73% of our distribution. The 68.95.99.7 rule just kind of saves you time from having to calculate these integrals over and over again whenever the mean and the standard deviation changes. You can use this rule to jump to what percent lives within each one of these intervals. I'm Joe, and thanks for spending some time with me.